What's up, ballers? This week, we have no idea what the f*** is going on with Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. Now let's get something straight, Playboy. The first chapter of this book ain't exactly like the rest. Here, we chillin' with the narrator who sounds a lot like Kurt Vonnegut. This fool been trying to write about living through the bombing of Dresden back in Dub Dub Deuce. But since nothing in war makes a damn bit of sense, the story he gonna tell us is just a big old mind f Billy Pilgrim must have smoked too much of that chronic, cause this fool is unstuck in time, meaning he always jumping through random moments in his life and can't do nothing about it. As he crawling through the shit rolling four deep, Billy wanders away, gets unstuck in time, and whack! He time trips to his future as a creased up optometrist. And after tripping through other life events, BAM! Billy slides on back to the war and gets got by the Germans. Our boy gets his ass tossed on a train when ZOW! Back to the future, B! And now here comes some motherfucking aliens in a motherfucking flying saucer. Billy takes one look at these green hustlers called Trout Famidorians and be like, yo, why me? And they all like, why anything? It just is, cuz. Zippity zap, player! Back on the train and now peeps be dying left and right. They reach the camp and zoop! Billy trips to the alien crib where they got him locked up like a zoo animal. Ain't all bad though, cause he gets locked up with a banging movie star named Montana Wild Hack. Mm, mm, mm. Zep! Billy wakes up right before it's lights out. B Pill gets capped and dies. That it? Nope. Hadrooken! Back to 1945 where the Germans put him and the other homies on lockdown in a slaughterhouse. When Dresden gets wrecked by a firebombing, Billy survives cause he got put in a meat locker. Wang! 25 years later, Billy gets on a plane with some other optometrist homies when the damn thing crashes. One head whack later, Billy's running his mouth on the radio about Trout Famador and flying saucers. Zam! Back in Dresden, the bombing's over and everything's quiet. Except for a little bird say, Pooty wee! What the hell, man? If you think Pootie Weed don't make a lick of sense, then well done, Playboy. Where'd you get that PhD from, man? All that bird's jibber jabbering is a symbol for how the narrator feels about war. Senseless. Everybody is supposed to be dead, to never say anything or want anything ever again. Everything is supposed to be very quiet after a massacre. And it always is, except for the birds. And what do the birds say? All there is to say about a massacre. Things like Pootie Weed. That's one of this book's main beefs, that there ain't nothing smart to say about war. And when you're talking about the death of 135,000 people, logic just don't apply. No matter how fly your writing game be, you can't describe what's indescribable. And anytime you try to do it justice, you're gonna end up with a story just like our narrators. So instead of a rap with a beginning, middle, and end, we get a version that's all screwed and chopped. The structure of this book is, in itself, a massacre. When you're in a world that's so damn broke that you can't even pick up the pieces, the only choice you got is to look at it differently. Some players think that's why the narrator made Billy P an optometrist. He corrects our vision of the world and helps us see that bad stuff happens for no reason. So it goes. But good stuff happens to all those that press subscribe. Catch you next week, partner.